Okay guys, well it seems like there's more changes with Comet Ison. And it's now grown a new tail. In fact, it's grown two new tails. And you know, thankfully we do have these amateur astronomers like Efran Morales Rivera. And he is basically the reason and others like him that we do force NASA's hand to release some photos about Comet Ison. Because other than that, they're very, very quiet. We're not seeing any of the mainstream media picking up on this. They're not making any uh, real kind of effort to make a big deal about this. You know, and when you remember previous big comets that have come through, they've always, you know, sucked as much as they can out of it. But it seems that Comet Ison is different and nobody wants to talk about Comet Ison and because there are a lot of people that do show an interest and know that Comet Ison is coming, they do have to, you know, give us some of the data. But, you know, it's the data that we actually can see by connecting our own dots and not from what NASA, the establishment agency, is giving us that helps us understand why Ison is an electric comet and a highly magnetic object. Now around the 31st of October till about the 3rd of November, Comet Ison crossed Earth's orbit and at that time we went from having a very quiet sun and you know very quiet uh, space weather and even the effects of the solar activity were not really strongly felt for about the last three to four weeks. But suddenly after Ison crosses Earth's orbit, that seems to change and we start getting this activity. And in fact, we've had three X flares. Now, the strongest of those X flares was on the 5th of November and it was an X 3.3. But interestingly, the previous two X flares, even though they were weaker than the one on November the 5th, resulted in no effects being felt on our planet. In fact, we didn't even really get an unsettled, you know, um, geomagnetic um you know, interaction. It was really nothing. It, it was a little bit of a rise in the protons and that was about it. Now that changed because on the 5th of November, when we got that X3.3, something was different about that one. And it actually was what was known as a very rare mo magnetic crochet. And what happens is these types of flares happen very quickly. And for some reason, our upper atmosphere ionizes at the same time that this flare is erupting on the sun. And this is happening very rapidly because these flares uh, peak very rapidly. Because when we get these flares, these X flares, they happen over periods of time where they build up to a peak. And then they, you know, they're erupting. Now, this one built up to a peak very quickly and we felt that in our upper atmosphere. So our upper atmosphere was being charged at the same time the sun was erupting with this X flare. Now normally it takes you know a couple of days for us to feel the effects so this was being felt almost you know instantaneously at the same time. So something's changed now within the sun's activity and energy because it seems that we're now feeling the effects of these flares because we just had one this morning which was almost an X flare actually. It was an M but I would pretty much call it an X, you know, it was so close to being X. But we actually felt that on all of the data as well. Okay, and we've got a very unsettled geomagnetic field. Now we didn't even have that with those first two X flares. And one of them was supposed to be a glancing blow. And it's just too much of a pronounced difference to say, oh, well, you know, it was just maybe it wasn't that earth directed or, you know, it, it's just, it's just too pronounced 
that suddenly we're feeling all of this activity, you know, from that flare that was barely an X, you know, I mean, it was, it was almost an X. I mean, it's getting stronger. I mean, I would be now paying attention, okay, to all of these. Start paying attention. I mean, we've just had another M. We've just had another one. And, you know, we're seeing all this turning up on the data now, so we're feeling the effects of this. And you can bet that this is going to start being felt more on our planet. Not only playing out in the weather and in the climate and in uh, earthquakes and volcanic activity, but also politically. Because when the sun starts heating up like this, this is when the war drums start again. So you can expect that they're going to start with the war drums again. And you know, it's interesting that I was saying that because when I was looking at doing the video and I was looking through all the data and getting all the articles together that I wanted to show you, I came across this article in my feed. Any deal in Iran, nuclear talks, very bad. Netanyahu basically saying that he is utterly rejected. Any agreement during the course of a nuclear talk between Iran and six major world powers as very bad. You know, it's just, it's all going to start up again, guys. Okay? And, you know, this is because the sun is now picking up. So we've also got, um, you know, huge meteors uh, coming in over, you know, the skies over in big towns now being seen by lots of people. But you know what's interesting is we also have this satellite falling out of orbit. Now they're saying that it came to the end of its life and that's why it's falling out of its orbit. You know, I think there's more to this, guys. For one, I don't understand why it's not going to break up completely because the new specifications for satellites are supposed to be that they do burn up completely. They never used to have these specifications and then they changed it. So uh, very, very interesting that this is going to actually hit somewhere. It's not just burning up. And um, just, you know, it's only a few years old, but oh no, it's actually outlived its life. You know, it's actually gone longer than we thought. Well, you know, what a shitty investment if it only done it for a few years, you know? No, there's more to this. And, you know, think about these incoming objects, you know. Maybe not all of them are meteors. You know, maybe some of them are these satellites that are falling. And, you know, they're not going to tell us when all these satellites are falling. If they can get away with it, you know, if it's some, tele, you know, telecom company in some third world, you know, country somewhere, whatever... You know, they're not going to report on it unless they absolutely have to. And a lot of the times if they lose one satellite, they can use another. But sometimes, you know, they can't. But they've been able to cover it pretty well. But I think that, you know, they didn't really lose a lot of satellites. 2011, it seemed to be a lot of them were coming down then. It kind of quietened off a lot around 2012. But now, 2013, it's all starting up again. It's very much reminding me of 2011, like multiplied by... A hundred. Okay, that's what I'm seeing around me, guys. This is why I have to come and you know give you all this this information because I can just see how it's playing out as opposed to when I first started on YouTube, how the information used to play out. And it's very different now and it's very, very intense what we're seeing. You know, we've got this huge super typhoon, biggest storm they've ever seen. You know, this just happens to happen around the X-flares as well. And as I said, it's because we're feeling them interact more. Now, isn't it interesting? We've got this grid X. Okay, this is the simulated uh, downing of the grids. Okay, it's almost like they knew that when Ison crossed Earth's orbit, things would start happening with the sun, isn't it? It's almost, it's almost like it's so convenient and this is on the 13th and 14th of November. And you know what else is really convenient about that or coincidental? Is that on the 14th of November is when ISON becomes visible in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, for you guys over in the US, in the Northern Hemisphere, that's the 13th. So isn't it interesting? When ISON comes visible to us, your grids go down. Yeah, I find that really interesting and I think more people should really be paying attention to this. You know, because uh, I've also found out that um, Iowa is joining in on these drills, okay? So if you didn't know that and you're in Iowa, well there you go, now you know. And the, 
very interesting thing about the Iowa um, drill is that they're saying it's on the 12th and 13th, okay? Um, and why are they different than the other drill that they're having on the grid X, you know? I mean, that's on the 13th and 14th, it says it here. So I'll link all this underneath and you guys can have a look. But um, so anyway, guys, we're also seeing, uh, you know, flashes in the sky. You know, now I'm telling you a lot of this plasma um, discharge and this energy that comes into our atmosphere sometimes does really crazy stuff. It acts in really crazy ways. It splits off into different plasmas. Uh, like, you know, kind of um, balls and it, it seems to, you know, interact with each other really differently. And I think that they're going to try and make out that they're UFOs. So just watch for the ET card because that's what the ET card is, guys, okay? And I've been saying this since 2011. I've been saying that this electromagnetic energy was going to start playing out in our skies and we were going to start seeing strange things. You can go back and look at my videos and see my videos and hear me saying that. And it is happening. So just be aware. Don't get sucked into this ET psyop crap. Um, and understand it's all this electromagnetic interaction between, you know, us and the sun and everything else that's incoming at the moment, which is changing. As I'm saying, since this X 3.3, it seems that things are changing now. And we're seeing a lot more activity. Now, more proof of this increased activity is that we've got... Um, you know, transformers blowing up, substations blowing up over in West Auckland. Okay, 46,000 homes without power. You know, just happens to ha uh, you know, happen on the same day. We have that huge, you know, X flare. Woo! I mean, well, you know, it was an M flare, but, you know, I'm going to call it an X too almost. But that has seemed to kick some ass down here. You know, on this typhoon, it probably just even intensified it more, guys. And I think it's just you know, a sign of what's going to come from now on. And I just think that we've definitely seen a change in the sun because of that X3. Um, that's showing me that there's definitely a difference because of this crochet magnetic effect that happened that's very rare. And since then, it's just seemed to be that all of the activity that we're seeing on the sun is now being felt here. So, um, yeah, I just think we have to continue um, watching that and just expect that that's going to play out on all of the levels, as I said, not only, you know, with the earthquakes and volcanoes, but also with the war stuff and the martial law stuff and all that other stuff, guys. So be ready for that. Please, guys, go and get some supplies for November the 13th. Please, just some basic things, okay? If, if it, nothing comes of it, then fine. You can just, don't, don't worry, but seriously, it's going to be really, really bad to be in a bad position um, at that time if you haven't got the basic supplies and, and, and it doesn't come back on and the power doesn't come back. And it just seems really coincidental that we're now seeing a lot of activity in the sun that's playing out, you know, on our planet and we have this um, grid X, you know, simulation coming. Now, just before I go, guys, I do want to recommend a channel, Nikola Tesla's Ghost. And he has picked up on this behavior between Ison and the sun. He doesn't, um, you know, fear monger and inject any Nibiru bullshit. He just uses the data. He shows you how to use the data yourself and where to get it from. You know, he's a good researcher and I have no problem recommending him. So you'll find the link to his channel underneath this video and I also have him in my recommended um, channels on my channel wall. So I think that's pretty much it guys. I think I've pretty much covered all of the articles I've found. So it just goes to show you that we have got big changes coming, Ison's changing and you know let's remember that Ison's coming in at a different trajectory. Let's understand that it's not a normal comet. This is something special guys. And it's about to start playing out, so uh, let's just sit tight and remember to be observers and uh, not play into it all. All right, guys, well, I'll leave it there. And as I said, all of the articles will be linked underneath. And as always, peace out.